Good evening all, welcome back to All for United WFC, another defeat, another 3-1 defeat as well, this is not going to be a very positive, upbeat show is it, we've got a lot of talking points from the game, obviously for those who, who watched it and all that kind of thing, it's going to be a, a group therapy session as Highland said at the start, because it's just depressing isn't it, <laughs> that defeat on Saturday, so we're going to get into all of that, has Barry froze or is it just me? <laughs> Karis hasn't frozen on my screen, so I think it's just Barry. Um, oh, no, he's back. Barry, he's back. <laughs> I thought we were going to get a chance to laugh at you again, Connor, but it appears Karma's come to bite me on the backside. <laughs> I was going to say it's you this time. Anyway, we might have Charlie join us. She's currently on the way back, <clears throat> back home, so if she is home by the time we get towards the end of the show, she will be joining us for the back end of this one. Um, where do we start? Where do we start? Obviously, we've got the three goals to talk about. We know the first one was offside. We're going to talk about that, I'm sure, but yeah, and all those kind of things after it. Um, I'll do what we usually do. Talk about the lineup. Um, the only change was obviously Jay's coming on the right, and that's kind of what we said in the preview. That was probably going to be the one if you were going to make one. So just very quickly with the... Harris, I'll start with yourself, just for, for you two. Was that Pretty much as you expect. I can't remember what we said on the preview in terms of whether that's what we would have gone for or not. But uh, yeah, yeah no, that's, on the right side. that's the eleven I said I would have gone for in the preview, and I, I think it it was the right choice. Um, there was there was no one I was looking at. It's okay, <laughs> there was, but there was no one I was looking at. And immediately, I wasn't shaking you. I wasn't shaking my head at you then. By the way, <laughs> <laughs> no, but I thought. Yeah, I thought it was the right choice. Um, the only snag potentially, I mean, we talked about it in the pre-match, was whether to bring in Ladd or not over Lisa Nelson. I mean, I I think if I was in the manager's shoes, I would have been starting Nelson. Um, unfortunately, she had a really quiet game, I thought. But whether whether Hayley Ladd would have made the difference is, yeah, I, I, it's hard to call. But yeah, the lineup was pretty much what I expected and it's probably what I would have picked, so... Just to address what I was laughing at, so Becky, who ghosted me after the game, by the way, decided to call me the coward's way out. Didn't want to, didn't want to face the red side of Manchester post game, but uh, yes, maybe. I, I mean, it's three times this season, isn't it? So no, it will never be red. It, it will never be red. It will never be blue. I should say. Oh my life! It's because I was reading the comment as of whatever. Anyway, you, know, you can go out now, Becky. You've had your thing. You can go out and do whatever you need to do. Um, Barry, for yourself then. Um, yeah, like I said, like Kerry said, it's kind of the line that we said it was going to be. Yeah, I tweeted it um, as, as the match started. I said it was the the team that I'd choose. And Skinzy, he listened. He did what we said. He's finally sat there and had a moment and thought to himself, oh, this would be a good idea. And um, yeah, to me, yeah, you could not argue with that starting lineup, I don't believe. That was, for me, the most common sense approach you know what for 30 minutes it showed that it was absolutely the right call so I, I i yeah listen there's gonna be a lot of things that people moan about today i don't think the starting lineup can be it um but we already know i mean that's 72 people already watching um at least 71 of them are going to be like oh we could have played this player or this player could have done that and so there's going to be lots of different things that are being said but for me no that was 100 percent the team's choose Indeed, yeah. It's what I expected. I maybe I stand by what I said last week. I maybe would have gone for Lad in there over one of those trio, but yeah, it's it's neither here or there because we started quite well, and that's where we'll get we'll begin with because we actually started the game all right. But as I said, as we will get on, obviously with the rest of the show, it's kind of what I said to to Robbie was stood next to me. I'm not getting excited because we do this every single week where we start well and it filters off, and that's exactly what happened. <laughs> but. Yeah, Karis, again, it's like, what did you see that went well then in the first kind of, I'll get to some of your comments in a second, there's a lot coming through, I'll come, I'm just going to go through and start some of these while uh, while Karis is speaking here, but what do you think we did well in those first 20 minutes or so? Obviously, we had a couple of shots, it, it, watching it back, I don't think it was as dominant as maybe it felt in the ground, but it, it felt good watching it, you know, we kept the ball well, Jason Garcia were running at the fullbacks, and we were getting at sea. Yeah, I think... Jesus, it feels like so. I feel like a different person than the person that watched the opening like twenty five minutes of that game. So I felt really positive. <laughs> um, but I think yeah, Jace was definitely for me um, a massive highlight. As as I had hoped she would be. I think that's why I wanted to see her in the team, giving City something to think about. She's, just, I mean, she's just a fantastic player to watch. Um, so yeah, she was excellent. I think. 
yeah, the defence looked relatively well organised um, as well. We were getting our shape relatively well. We were being quite direct, I thought. We were trying to go forward. And then I think after we conceded, that was when confidence just completely dipped. And that's when we start our hilarious thing of passing around at the back with no real intent and just invite inviting pressure what I really liked in the opening minutes is that we were not doing that we were trying to actually move the ball forward up the pitch and we were playing well um and then yeah I definitely want to get on to that pass now from the back well I tweeted it at one point because it was doing my head in because there was a passage of play I think it was three times in a row we passed out from the back and City basically took it off a straight away and it led to chances it was doing my head and then eventually marriage went no right we're going long here <laughs> because it was getting a bit ridiculous how many chances we wanted to give up in like five minutes spell um but Barry for yourself what did you think went so well then in that first 20 minutes so we're going to get onto the negatives and the goals and, and what went wrong but like Keris, we, we did start well we were getting at City we had a couple of chances and it just again it like Kerry said, I feel like a different person because it was so good. Well, not so good. Obviously, a goal would have would have topped it off, but it felt good watching, I thought. It did. I mean, I'm not just gonna narrow it down just to that first 20 minutes. What I want to point out really is that we'd all called out Man United for the, the absolute dross that was on offer against Bristol City. And and you know, I took a, a couple of pelters sat here uh for daring to believe that Manchester United should have had more than eight shots. Uh, against Bristol City, uh, a side who are regularly battered by lots of people. A reminder, Brighton scored seven past them, uh, which means they must have had at least seven shots. Um, and we only managed eight. And there's no way they scored 100% of their shots. Um, so just throwing that one out there. But actually, when I looked through the stats and, and, and everything, obviously I did the eye test having watched the match as well. But it was really, the performance itself was not bad. You look at what we had. We had, hi, Sean. How you doing, brother? It's nice to see you there. Uh, 53% possession for City, 47 for us. It was quite even. We both had 15 shots. Um, five on target for them, four on target for us. The big issue comes to the clinicality. They had three clear-cut chances. They scored them all. We had no clear-cut chances. Um, the shots on target that we had, all four of them were saved by Keaton. Um, and... The, the, the shots that they had on target, and we said they had five of them, but three of them were scored. So, you know, this is kind of where the problem is, is that actually we were very even. This isn't a situation where Manchester City dominated. This is just a case of we started really well. As you said, we were playing football really well. Um, I, I, was, I was buoyant, you know. I got myself suitably motivated prior to the game. I was ready for it. But for everyone that was sitting there and telling me, that I had to be motivated for a Manchester derby, I mean, joke's on you, because this is why I wasn't motivated, because I knew I was coming on here on Monday to have a conversation about how we'd had a better game, but we got spanked, and we did. We had a 20-minute period where we just turned into the Keystone Cops, and before you know it, we've we've lost the plot and, and the game. So I kind of knew that was going to happen. Um, I'd have come on here and, and, and ate my words 100%. If it had been a different story, we'd have maintained that level, but we didn't. And as you said, Keris, you absolutely nailed it. It started with this ridiculous passing out from the back, something that Manchester City do so well. They're brilliant. Hey? I was watching our press and we were pressing, I thought, quite well. We were cutting off the space, we were cutting off areas, but they play through it brilliantly. Whenever we do that, you know, we, we look like a bunch of under 10s in so far as, you know, where we're going to put the ball. Um, and we don't think about who's the best person to give the ball to. They don't have the touch to do that. Um, I'm, I'm thinking specifically about an opportunity where Mary Earps just passed the ball to May Letizia, Um, And there was a player immediately on it. And this was just a, a few minutes before the goal. And it's like it's such a stupid move to make. Why would you play your defender into trouble? Um, I know the game has changed a lot from when I used to play it. Um, but I'm not being funny. Don't do that. You don't play your defender into trouble. It's, it's not a sensible thing to do. So, um, yeah, I think it's really, really interesting to, to discuss about that. But for me, before we get into the, the three negatives that are about to come, absolutely flying out of the traps as a whole match, 
we matched Manchester City. Where we didn't match them was in our ability to properly test the goalkeeper and take our chances. And, and in that respect, we failed. But apart from that, I don't think we can be too disappointed with the general performance because there were some positives there for sure. I think that's the most frustrating thing because it, it's basically the first 20 minutes and the last 20 minutes, I felt like, is when we, we actually played. Um, and I, I don't know why. And, you know, I don't understand this whole... We're not a we're not a Chelsea and everyone else that are playing in multiple competitions. And we, we're playing one game a week at the moment. Have done for pretty much most of the season. So I, I don't think it's a fitness thing. And if it is, that's a big worry. You know, because we're only playing one game a week. And we, you know, I know we've had injuries at the back, but the midfield and the forward line, we've we've got enough players there to fill in. Um, and I just don't understand because you know Jace was running at play. Jace off the ball, by the way, is a little bit frustrating. I think you know she was running at players, but then not tracking back. And I felt sorry for Jade because she was getting overrun quite a lot on that side. And Zellen was then getting pulled out of position because she had to cover in a position that wasn't hers because Jace wasn't coming back and helping on that right-hand side. What was interesting about Jade's going forward, she was doing that thing that she does. She tackles the players, gets through them all, does all of that jazz. But the cutback, just it was never really to a United player. And sometimes you see it happening right at the front post and there's nobody there. So it's straight to a defender who clears it. And... Like you would just think that some of our players might have realised that sometimes the ball goes to the, the near post and have somebody there so that we can keep the possession. But you're absolutely right. And when we talk about the next one, um, Chase definitely comes up in, in <laughs> my problems with the goal. But crack on, people. And it's just incredibly frustrating because it's, it's like you said, if we'd have continued that for the rest of the game, we probably do get something out of the game. And, you know, we probably do go on potentially and win it, get a draw or something like that. But because we don't sustain it and we only have moments <clears throat> where we look okay and then obviously we're going to get to the goal now, but we concede one and just fall off for, for 30. It, it, you can fall off in games for five, 10 minutes. We do it for you know, 40, 45, and you can't do that, especially against a team like Man City. Because Barry's already said, they get a few shots on target. They're going in. <laughs> they're that clinical when they've got the players they've got. Um, so, Keris, I come to you on the first goal firstly. Obviously, we know it's offside. Bonnie Shaw is definitely offside in the build-up to the play. We, we know all of that. Um, and ha to be fair, decisions across the weekend have been incredibly poor, not just in our game. But, you know, a few in the Chelsea one, a couple in the Arsenal. They've been incredibly poor across the weekend. So we know that, that you know, it, this goal, shouldn't we shouldn't be talking about this because it should have been ruled out for that reason. And if VAR, if VAR is in this, this gets ruled out. However, there's still a few phases of play after this. Obviously, it goes out wide. It's, I've got a load of issues with this. I know you two are probably going to talk about it, but the way it goes out wide, there's nobody there. There's nobody on Jess Park in the middle. Um, and, yeah, I mean, what did you make of the goal overall? Like I said, we shouldn't really be talking about this because it shouldn't have stopped. Yeah, no, I mean, the, the, fir the first and most obvious thing to say is how frustrating it is to have that level of officiating because it shouldn't even take VAR to see that she's offside, right? Like, I have, like, run, uh, run the lines for my games at uni when I've been on the bench and I could have seen that was offside. So that's the first thing to say, but there's also no point in like trying to attribute anything to that because we all know that refs in the WSL get decisions wrong. Um, my main problem with the goal is when it goes out right out wide, like you said, Jace was phenomenal going forward, but I was, I really felt for Jade because she was every single time there was an overlapping run on and Jace wasn't tracking that runner. And as soon as the ball went out to that side and I saw, I think it was Wahabi start running, I was like, she's she's off. And there was absolutely no one tracking her because Jace isn't tracking her back. And it had been happening the entire half. I could have told you that was where a goal was going to come from and it's where it did come from. And then obviously the marking in the middle is not ideal either. I think it was just like... You know, it was a goal that shouldn't have stood, but there's also a lot that we can learn from it in terms of why are we not picking up on patterns of mistakes, like not tracking those overlapping runs when they've been happening all half. Why are we not picking up on that earlier? Because it should, like, when we've seen it in the stands and we can t see this... <laughs> when we can see in the stands that that's happening then someone on the pitch should be saying this run is happening every time and we're not tracking it. So, yeah, and you can you can see on the replay Jade pointing and pointing to Harvey. Like, she basically pointed out the pass for her because she was so desperate to try and get someone to come and cover that run. No one did. And obviously then other players get pulled out of position trying to cover it. It's like, 
And then that's where you lead to issues in the middle because everyone's suddenly panicked. They've realized someone's not done their job and then everyone's running around like headless chickens. It's just like, yeah. So it was not it was not great all in all. And I think it all came from a lack of picking up earlier that that was going to be a source of a problem. It's incredible. I've just, I've just been watching it back as you were saying. Obviously, you know, the problems are there. JD is pointing, Jace isn't back. Nikita Paris is actually more in a defensive position than Jace is on that right-hand side. But then you've got Nelson, Zellum, Mayer, Millie and and Hannah all in the box on three City players. That's to me, that's more than enough to stop either one stop that cross going in, but also for somebody to block the shot from Jess Park. To me, that's absolutely criminal that you've got pretty much a whole team bar Jason Garcia and Ella Toon actually is further forward as well. So again, Toon is not even dropped back into the position. Paris is the one that's really bolted back to to get back and help out. So you've got everyone bar three of United players versus three City attackers. And obviously, um, the, the player who puts the cross in. So, I, oh, it's, I'm going to get more annoyed as this goes on. <laughs> but Barry, what, what, like, what, how easy is that? That it's just one overlap, it's a cross into the middle, and there's nobody on Jess Park in the middle. Well, that moment that I said about the short passing, which happened maybe 90 seconds before this goal, is what I think led to it. That was the catalyst. It was the moment when they started to put the choke cold around our necks, really, because at that point we started faffing about with the ball where we just didn't need to. If we'd have carried on doing what we were doing, I think we'd have had the opportunity to continue trying to attack down the wings and, and do what we were doing, which was really positive and was working. For some crazy reason, we, we decided we were going to just close down the play and, and put ourselves into real pressure. Uh, and City just absolutely went for it. They really did. And they earned some set pieces from that. And as a result, we end up in this situation. Now, we had, ended up with a goal kick, <clears throat> which obviously Mary Epps takes. Now, you mentioned it as well. Nikita Paris was the furthest one back. Ella Toon was too far forward um, and she's meant to be central. You imagine that Keats should have been slightly higher up and Tooney should have been, as you say, more central. She wasn't. Um, and as a result, that really led to us having a bit of a problem. Lisa Nelson um, was actually um, – she's a little bit like me at a party where I don't know anybody in this girl. You know, she doesn't quite know which group to go over and talk to. Should I go and talk to that? Oh, no, they're too cool for me. I can't go into – oh, no, they're, they're into basketball. I don't care about that. But it's really different. And so she doesn't really know where to be. She's not in the right spot at all, um, which doesn't help because she's the central midfielder who's supposed to be there to help. Um, instead, what happens is she gets completely bypassed. Ella Toon gets bypassed. Uh, May Letitia comes out and the ball comes out to the right-hand side, <clears throat> at which point Jade Riviere – is there. At this point, we're comfortable. But we then see Jay Riviere put the arm out. She can see the overlap. She can see it's coming. This is where Jay's or somebody needs to have come back to help. So either Jay's needs to come back and help support Jay Riviere so that the overlap can't happen, or May Letizia is the right side of defender has got to go over. Now, if she does that, that causes trouble because that's one of your backline missing. Uh, and as, as we're about to find out, it's pointless either of them being there because as soon as that ball comes in, there is enough room for Jess Park um, to do what she needed to do and, and and put the ball into the back of the net. So it was it was shambolic in that respect, and it was such an easy goal to score. So again, people are going to see it, and I can already see it. I can already see it in the comments. That the the stuff that I knew was coming, genuinely right. We'll, we'll wait until we get to the goal to to have that discussion, so I don't repeat myself far too much. But genuinely there, there was something I was going to do uh, but I just couldn't be bothered because it'd be like speaking to the wall uh, so I'm not going to bother with that but um, yeah for me at least three or four different people culpable there um, but we haven't seen a single one of those names mentioned. well we have actually we've seen other two mentioned but other than that not a single other name mentioned uh, we're just going to see one person's name mentioned about today uh, what a surprise that is not at all doesn't surprise me in the slightest but there we go. Yeah, that's... yeah, very good. And it was offside, so that's the bit that's mo more frustrating. I know that you don't particularly care about this, um, oh, Michael. Harsh but true. Um, I mean, it is. Well, to be fair, <laughs> so much of this now that actually they could perhaps do a little bit of 
you know, work down the bottom. I actually, I washed this the other day and I felt to myself, I haven't done this for about 10 years when I had it up there to be able to do it. It was really weird sort of washing it on your chin. But anyway, uh, we'll get to it, Memphis, because I've already had this conversation. It's a team game. Um, it's lazy to just go and blame one person, but that's what everybody's going to do. I see you doing it already. And that's fine, because that's your opinion. So you crack on, sunshine. Um, but yeah, it was offside. And I know that you didn't agree with that because, you know, it's not a real reason. But at 1-0 it makes a difference. If, we, if that's still nil-nil at that point, we could have made it to half-time at nil-nil. You know, there, there was a chance. Don't get me wrong, they probably would have gone and scored another one anyway because we were under the cosh at that point. But it's just one of those, um, really. And yeah, high end, you may not ever comprehend this, but to be fair, they're not talking, so that's probably why. It, it, it's not It's not that I don't care about that one. It's more that I think of Skinner blaming the officials it's like, well, we also, I think, got favourable decisions in the game as well. That's what I think over the course of a 90 minutes, I think it balances itself out. Yes, that's offside. Okay. Yes, it should be ruled out. But I think it's we're very lucky as well that Hannah's probably still on the pitch. And also, I don't think that second, the one that they actually got ruled out. For me, if VAR's in that game, that doesn't get ruled out because May has attempted to play the ball. Therefore, Bunny Shaw is not offside. So I think it kind of evens itself out when we're talking. That's what, don't get me wrong. That should be ruled out. Like, 100%. Mm-hmm. I'm with you on that. But we we'll disagree on that one, but again, it. that's the thing. And this is this is where my mind goes a little bit funny, Connor, because if we're agreeing it shouldn't be offside, you know, listen, I know that we're all getting a bit angry at Mark Skinner at the moment, myself included, and a lot of the times he opens his mouth and I just want to reach for the remote control and push the mute button so that I don't have to pull out what's left of my hair around the edge. This was a full head of hair uh, before this season started. Um, but genuinely, I get that, but he's not wrong. You know, I, I can't sit here and have a go at the geezer for that. That was an awful decision. Um, and because it wasn't made, it did put us 1-0 down in a game where we were at that point still very much in it. So, you know, it's, you're right. Hannah Blundell could have been sent off, but it's not about, you know, I believe this is what the kids call nowadays, what about her? You know, you can't be saying, well, what about this? At the end of the day, that decision was wrong. Um, and, and the what abouts don't really matter. I think for me, it's more like, just to jump in quickly, it's not about being like Skinner shouldn't have brought up the ref and that decision, because obviously he should. And I was like, when I saw that offside back afterwards, I was absolutely furious. But the point isn't like, the point isn't should it have stood or are we right to be annoyed about it? It's more there was still an hour of football left to play. And had we taken our chances, then it shouldn't have been a problem like and after after, I don't think actually the first goal was the issue so much as the second one that was when as the players were lining back up after that the body language was horrible like everyone's heads were absolutely gone at that point I think if if we go in at half time one nil down there's a real chance that we could have come back out and made something of the game um but then like that second I think just absolutely killed us off well, let's move on to the second. And so there's a lot of comments. I do want to get through. Sorry, there's so many comments there. I'm struggling to try and get through them all. Um, well, as we go through, but we'll move on to the se- this second one. I, I, I oh, this is frustrating me the most because this should no way be going. It's a long ball from from kind of midfield. There's so many. We, we, we're in good defensive shape. We lose the first ball, fine, whatever. Nobody's watching the second one. And for me, I'm looking at Mary Earps going, "Why have you not come out for this?" It's within your six-yard box, and she's just stood there like, I'll try and block this. Like that, For me, I literally said this to Jess next to me. I said, as a goalkeeper, you're, you're protected most of the time. Come out, clatter into her, and take the ball with you, because you will nine times out of ten get the foul anyway You know, for, for taking the keeper out. So I don't know why she's not done that. But again, Kerish, you just mentioned it there, talking about the body language. That, that second goal to me just sums up in terms of how much we fall off a cliff, because it's such a to me, basic you know, rookie error defensively. And you know, you go to who nil down, it's it's pretty much game over from there. So I appreciate I've just rambled on a little bit <laughs> myself as a second goal. But this is the out of all of the goals, this is the one that wound me up the most because it's so so unavoidable that they should not be scoring from a it's not even like a wide cross into the box. It's pretty central. It's just almost like a hit and hope down the middle, like American football almost, where you just kind of you know, hail Mary into the box like you would in the last minute. It's so poor. I think it's so poor on this one, but 
I, I can see you disagreeing, but you could watch it back if you want. The, the cross is. Central. I have watched it back, mate, and that's why I'm disagreeing because it's not central and it's not a million miles down the midfield. It's about on the edge of where you'd say the third is. You're not I wrong. Would... It's an awful goal. I'm. You making it sound I, like I would. I would say that's pretty central. You're calling mate. that midfield? Christ alive! Somebody sort your hair out. Jesus, <laughs> what? You made it that's... sound like she was in her own half kicking well, it. She, no, no. What I meant was central. She's not out wide, is she? She's kind of like. Closer to the, she's closer to the middle of the pitch than she is out wide. That's what I'm saying. So it's not like a, a looped cross in. It's kind of like a. We tried it in the second uh, towards the end of the game, just long balling into the middle from midfield like that. I think it's not. It's not even the ball in that's the issue. It's just the marking. It's just that Park when she scores is just completely unmarked. That's that's the criminal thing for me. Like it's an. It's just an okay ball. There's nothing really to say about it. But you you wouldn't expect a goal to come from it. It's the fact that. First of all, we don't challenge properly for the initial header. And then second of all, the goal scorer who put the ball in the back of the net, like, what, two minutes before, is unmarked in the box. That makes me want to tear my hair out. Like, it's just, it's basic. Like, you check your shoulder, you go, has everyone got a player? You go, is your is my player still with me? No. Okay, where is she? Oh, she scored. Like, that's that's the problem for me. I agree with you in terms of the marking for Park. The bit that annoys me, I counted them. There were five players uh, around their number 33 who I was going to check and didn't. So um, there you go. But whoever it was won the header. Um, five players and she won a header. Five Manchester United players, which includes the likes of Millie Turner, and not one of them won that header. You know, she's rose, rose higher than every single one of them to head a ball across to, like you say, an unmarked player. And how Mary Earps, I mean, if that was David De Gea, would everyone be having kittens right about now? Um, because for this one, and indeed for the third, she's just stood still. There's not really an element where she's come out and tried to win the ball, punch the ball. And you can see it's coming. You know, you don't have to be um, Gordon Banks to realise that was happening. So, yeah, I, I, it was an atrocious goal, to be fair, um, for that very reason. Um, we might disagree about what, what the, uh, the the area is that it's all happening, but it doesn't change the, the dynamics of it, which is at the end of the day, it's a long ball into the box, which should have been cleared because there were five players around it and the fact that one person was able to get above the others, um, which I know is what happens with headers in general, but when you consider it's one against five, um, I'd have expected there to have been a little bit more effort into that. Um, May Letizia was left behind her in the wrong spot entirely. Um, but like I say, Mary Epps, just where was she? It was comical. Uh, and it would have been funny if it wasn't for the fact that at that point I was smashing it against the wall thinking, well, there we go. That's the game pretty much gone already unless we can come out with the same verb as we did in the first half. So, yeah, I mean, that was an atrocious goal, to be fair. And then how long was I? I was going to say, come out in the second half all fire. And that's what I said to somebody at half time. We're going to, you know, if we could come out, start strong literally within 30 seconds, which we get to in a set. You'll realize there's no player of the match ball in the chat at the moment. We're still deliberating as to who we're going to put on this because we're, we've got two names that we're pretty, pretty confident on. There's a couple of other names we're torn on. This might be the first time ever there's only three names on this poll because we could put four, but I, one of the options I'm against. <laughs> but uh, it's uh, actually, it's actually between two players, I think, isn't it? Like, yeah. It, Oh, mate, it's your show. Put whoever you want on. Put whoever you want on. If you want to put Ella Soon on there, put Ella Soon on there. Don't let Kellis change your mind. <laughs> no chat. No one in that midfield's making this on the player of the match, that's for sure. Um, maybe I'll just put the fans because it was cold and it was windy as anything. <laughs> maybe I'll put us on there or something. I don't know, the corner flag. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know what we put on. Um Oh, this one, Aoife Manya, maybe. You know, she, she came on and did, did all right. I don't know. So that's why there's no player of the match pod in the chat at the moment, because we are literally still deliberating between us <laughs> who to put on here. No, um, we're not deliberating. Really I've told you my four. Other than that, I don't care. You know, it's up to you to choose. Like, you have very few jobs on this channel, Connor. You look after the Twitter. You look after all of that stuff. Brilliantly, by the way. When it comes to being on here, that's literally your job. Pick four players to go on there. Um, so, yeah, not having that. Oh dear. Um, yeah. <clears throat> I don't know what else. Yeah. Well, well, it'll be in the chat in a second. Um, on that one. Um, 
And you may disagree. There's going to be four names on that. You're going to disagree with a couple of them. But oh, there there's a hundred people watching, Connor. If you think a hundred people are going to go, do you know what? Fair point. You've lost the plot entirely. Um, there was a comment a bit further up. I, I, I don't know who you're aiming this at. I don't, no, not that one. It was, it was definitely a Jennifer comment, but it wasn't that one. I've lost it now. Um, it was about no, it wasn't Jennifer. Sorry, it was it was this one. Not. Not one person mentioned it was a fault for that goal and baffled by a comment. I'm assuming you're baffled by the fact we're blaming Earps for that one. I don't, me personally, it's not all on Earps. I think she should come out for it, personally. But it's not just her. As Barry said, there's five players to win a header. She's got to win. Someone's got to win that header and make it their own. Uh, someone's got to watch the second ball. But if it goes that far, Mary's got to get that. Anything For me, as a goalkeeper, anything in the six-yard box is yours. Like You've got to come out and get that. It's not like it's a fizzed-in cross that's really quick across the line. It's a looped header <laughs> up in the air. You know, Mary's got that every day of the week for me. So I think she's just as at fault um, as, as anyone else. And that's what Barry said earlier. You know, it's a collective thing. It's not, we didn't just lose because of one player. There were so many players <laughs> that were poor in, in moments throughout the game. So yeah, not on that one. Right. Someone just mentioned it in the chat, the third goal. Now this literally killed any as people may have seen, if they saw me in the ground, I literally walked back into the concourse as soon as this goal hit the back of the net because I was not interested <laughs> at all um, at this point because it was like, right, here we go. Kicking off for the second half. We're going to, hopefully, if we can get the next goal and care is literally 30 seconds. <laughs> they uh, hit the back of the net again. Not a lot. Yes, I, don't I, I will, was. first of all, say I literally did not see this because I was still getting myself a pie from the concourse at this stage. There was like three people in front of me in the queue. I was like, oh, I'm not going to miss anything. It's fine. So I actually missed this goal. Have you watched it back? <laughs> or are you watching yeah, it back I'll now? Is that what you're frantically trying to find? I'll watch you back now. <laughs> <laughs> I'll come to Barry then while you're frantically trying to find the clip of the, of the third goal. Right. Well, do you know what? This is why I like TJ. He's, he's one of the OGs. He's been with us for so long. Uh, and I love it because he's currently the only person that I can see in the chat who is, I think, looking at this the right way. Everybody in the chat is going to say Katie Zellum shouldn't be bullied off the ball. And 100% she shouldn't be. Uh, although I'd, I'd challenge every single one of you to be playing a game of football um, and then have somebody run into your back and, you know, not be bullied off of it. But, you know... She does. She makes that mistake. And I'm not going to sit here and try and suggest otherwise because that was her job. Um, what I hate about these conversations is that nobody's mentioned a single thing about how that whole move starts down the left-hand side. Jay Riviere swings a leg out at it, doesn't clear it, and it just flies backwards towards May Letizia, um, who then doesn't win her challenge either. So that the ball then comes out to Katie Zellum for her to lose. But there's then nobody in the middle of the park um, so that when they run towards goal, May Letizia is now out of position and unable to keep up with Bunny Shaw. And Mary Earps, uh, who's the goalkeeper, doesn't close the angle, doesn't run out, doesn't try and do anything, just stands still and waits for Bunny Shaw to curl the ball round the, the left hand of Mary Earps, who at this point was probably wishing that she had have run out. So there are there's five players there um, that, that you absolutely could have put the blame on and every single person in this chat is going to put the blame on Katie Zellum. So for that reason, I'm pleading the fifth. I've got absolutely no reason to argue with these people. Uh, the thing I was going to do is I was going to create a heat map. I was going to actually sit and rewatch the game of all the things that Katie Zellum does, both good and bad. Um, but I thought, why am I bothering? Because genuinely no one's going to change their mind. They all hate Katie Zellum and that's absolutely their, their drama. Um, that's up to them. At the end of the day, Manchester United conceded that goal. It wasn't Katie's Ellen. There were two errors before she even had the chance to get the ball and two errors afterwards. It was a poor, poor team conceding. And I'm not being funny. 30 seconds into the match, that's unforgivable. You just had a team talk from, I don't care who it's from. I don't care if it was by Ronald Bloody McDonald. You've just been given a team talk that tells you to get out there, win the ball, Put some effort into the game. Start well. Try and win the ball back. 30 seconds into the game, we've gone and conceded a third goal. It's, that's what's unforgivable. And the fact that we're going to sit here and just have a go at one person, thats I, it just it does my nothing. Like the players, absolutely balls up there. 100%. Because that's on them. That's not a Mark Skinner problem. That 
is Manchester United. They should not have done what they just did. And that was, for me, you said the second goal was the worst one. That was the worst one. It was absolutely horrific. I hated that. Um, and it was at that point that I, I, I swore. Because I was like, that's just pathetic. Genuinely pathetic. And I'm sure you lot were swearing as well when you were there. I because... definitely can't repeat what I said. <laughs> absolutely <laughs> no not. Chance. I probably can't repeat the stuff I said because it was just unacceptable. Absolutely unacceptable. I was going to say, yeah. I, and no, I also can't repeat what Jess said either <laughs> next to me on, on that one. But it, you're right. Like you said, it, we, we lose the ball. It, 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 like you said, it's so frustrating because it was like we just come out in the second half and it was like, right, here we go. If we can just stay in the game, get the next goal, we'd be in it. And then all of a sudden we concede and and, and the game is done. Sorry, there's Memphis there. Are you are you on drugs, mate? I can't even. You genuinely think that I've sat here to blame four other people who've actually made a mistake just to protect Katie Zellum, who I've also admitted has made a mistake. This is where it gets ridiculous. Like, honest, what is wrong with the world today that you can't even just have a proper debate about it? There are four other people that make a mistake. If you don't see Jay Riviere lose the ball, if you don't see May Letizia not win her challenge, if you don't see May Letizia not get back in front of Bunny Shaw, and you don't see Mary Earps come out from there, I'd suggest you take up netball. Well, that's the thing. There's so many errors in, in multiple goals throughout the whole game. You know, it wouldn't, on the second goal, there's multiple players that make errors in that. On that one, Zellum gets pushed off the wall too early, too easily for me. Mayer's obviously dived in, or, or I say dived in, but she's pushed up too soon. And for me, again, mary has got to come out. You know, I think if Bunny Shaw's clone, she's already passed the last line of defence. What have you got to lose? Just come out at her. And yeah, so there's so many errors in these goals. But this is... <laughs> <laughs> yes, poor John Neville was stood in front of me and Jess, and uh, <laughs> it was it was a good. Sorry for hitting the thing as well, the the bar that we had in front of us quite a few times as well. You shouldn't apologise. <laughs> no I can remember in a game against Leicester. Oh, he, he has his moments and all. He does get into it, you know. So don't worry too much. He's not a snowflake. Um, and no, you were. <laughs> you don't want to know. <laughs> It wasn't like, like literally. I said something and then just walked straight into the concrete. As Jess will attest to, I literally I, I got back to my seat, saw that goal, I was gone, <laughs> straight into the concourse. Have a drink with Charlie and, and a couple of the guys that were still <laughs> in there. So there no, we go. you probably haven't taken drugs, and that was a bit strong from me. So I'm sorry about that. I probably shouldn't have come out quite so harsh, but it's just I find it mental. People think I can't criticise Katie's Adam. I can. But there are four other mistakes. If, if the balls just come to her from a city player and she's bodied. I'd sit here and say that, but that's not what happened. Five terrible errors in that in that goal. Keris, have you got anything to add on on this third one? Like you said, it, it, it was just most frustrating, wasn't it? It was so quick after. Yeah, after no. I mean, I've I've watched it back. I, I I have watched it back. I was exaggerating. I watched it back yesterday. I've watched it back again just now. I think, yeah, it's just. But again, it's the basics for me in terms of awareness checking your shoulder, tracking runners, knowing where the WSL leading goal scorer is. Like, I just think that these are really basic things. Like, it is not like Bunny Shaw is hard to spot, okay? Like, I saw her stood next to Jess Park at one point. I was like, she is massive. Like, she is, it, yeah, it's just, I think it's just the basic kind of awareness um, for me that was really lacking on that goal. And obviously, like, yeah, we can talk about all the individual mistakes that led up to it. Um, but like, yeah, it's, it's for that, that for me just comes back again down to like basics, like we saw with the second goal of just poor marking. Yeah. It's, it's just a, like I said, it's a catalog of error. And it, it wasn't just that because we'd had that throughout the whole game as well. Um, in terms of making these types of errors, as we said, we could have conceded more in the first half if, towards the lead them to half time. Not gonna lie, after that, I've got no idea what happened, you know, for for the next 20 odd minutes or so until we started playing towards the end of the game. Um, but there is something I wanted to mention before we get on to I get to just the whole thing around the game, to be honest. But and I, I think me and Barry slightly disagree on this. So Karis, I'll come to you first. Obviously, the player of the match poll is in the chat, by the way. You can vote on that one. We've gone for um Jade Riviere, Jace Paris, and I did put Eva Mannion on the bottom because, to be fair, she came on. She did all right at right back, considering. And uh, there we go. So she's on the poll <laughs> uh, on that one. So you can get your votes in on there. 
I'm just but, pleased you uh, made a decision, Connor. Well done. <laughs> but it comes back to the point, Keris. Obviously, Jade Riviera went down. Um, I don't know what minute it was in. It was around the 70 something. Well, no, it was before that, actually. Now, there's been a lot of reaction to this online, and I feel very strongly about this, um, that she should have just been taken off. Now, there may have been a conversation. I'm pretty sure, actually, that Jade probably said, no, I'm fine to carry on. Hence, she came back on. However, my stance on it is, I don't care what she says. The medical staff have got to overrule it because with an injury record like Jade has, she's always injured. She's just come back from an injury. The fall she had, she's clearly in pain and she comes back on limping, holding her knee. She then goes into a slide tackle with her and then goes off. To me, that's just so irresponsible from, from the medics. Now, like I said, we don't know what the conversations were. She may have said she's perfectly fine, but she clearly wasn't because she was not moving well at all when she came I was going absolutely mental in the stands when I saw her stood next to the sideline looking like she was going to come back on. Because it's like you say, Connor, right? 99.9% of players at any level, they want to be on the pitch. And if they're asked and there's even the slightest bit of possibility in their mind that they can play on, then they will say they can come on. The difference is that at the top level, you have a medical team and it is their job to say, no, she shouldn't be continuing. So I feel like, I don't know, it was, it, it shouldn't. And there's people in the chat saying, you know, what if she did all the kind of tests that a physio can do on the field? That doesn't change the fact that she couldn't run. Like, I think that's the difficulty. Like, as soon as she came back on the pitch, you can see her like hopping across the pitch to get back into position and for her to still be like, on for a good couple of minutes after that she should have just gone down straight away when she got back on the pitch and the manager should have been telling her no go down because like it was yeah I was really not happy to see her continuing I'm really just hoping it's nothing serious um we'll obviously never know if it is anything serious how much difference those extra two minutes on the pitch make but it, I just think it's not a risk worth taking especially when at that point were, were we 3-1 down or were we 3-0 down three like nil. Exactly. So at that point in a game, have a little, you know, just ha take a bit of perspective and go, OK, this is our strongest fullback. Not that she's got much competition, but she is a very strong fullback, right? So they're like, this is our strongest fullback. This is one of our strongest players in this match. We've got an FA Cup semi-final in three weeks. Let's just, you know, take take her off and not take the risk. So. Yeah, that was one of the most frustrating things that frustrated me all afternoon. I think that's. I mean, Jess, we definitely can't repeat what we said because I was, as you can, I was screaming at that point, just like, just take her off because it was like she was. She had like a, I think I can't remember. Someone tried to pass it to her and it was behind her, and that's when she went into the tackle with Hemp. And it was like, then she started before that. She went for like a like jog forward and was like kind of like hobbling. Like, I was like, what? Like just. I'm also looking at her, she's never going to do it because it's play, you know, it's players and you know they're, they're always going to carry on and, and want to play on um, in that sense unless they're completely you know done in. But I just feel like it's just irresponsible for me um, to to allow that. You know, we have you know me and Barry spoke about this last night. There's, this obviously isn't a protocol, but the concussion protocol was brought in for this very reason because players said, "Oh, they're fine to go on and carry on," and obviously that has lasting damage. I feel that. It shouldn't necessarily be a protocol. But I do think the medical staff have got to look at it a little bit different. The game's done. We're three 0 down, as you said. We've got a semi final on the horizon. It's not worth it, especially when Mannion was ready to come on. Anyone who follows our Twitter account, I literally tweeted Jade Riviere subbed off. Mannion's ready. Mannion's coming on in her place. Now I actually replied to it and said, actually, no, she's not, because all of a sudden Mannion then went sat back down and Jade came on. I was like, what? Like, what's going on? <laughs> like, she was ready. Like she was literally ready to come on with with Rachel. But but there we are. Um, yes, Barry. I know you slightly disagree with me. Yeah? I think, unless you've changed your mind in the last 24 hours or so. Well, I, I both agree and disagree. It's a very simple period for me. Um, I, I agree with you that, you know, if, if the medical team or uh, the management team have told her she needs to go back on, then absolutely that's irresponsible and it's not right. Um, and at that point, it, it would be the wrong thing. My argument would purely be that if Jade has said, I want to give it a try, can I have a minute just to try and run it off? That's absolutely her opinion. It's her body. Like, we can all sit here and go, the medical staff need to take her off and tell her she needs to go. Anyone who's played football knows that you want to try and run it off and you will give it a minute. Um, how many times have we seen a heavy challenge and a player get on 
and they manage to, you know, get a bit of feeling back into the leg again. So if she's passed all the tests that the medical team want to do, and, and let's be clear, what you're sitting there and doing at this moment in time is you are telling a player that, you know, that they can't go back on. Why would you do that? Everybody will try and run that thing off. You've got to do that. And you've got to give them the opportunity to do that. We had a substitute ready to go. The issue for her should be, if she feels that it wasn't going to run off, then she, like you say, she drops down to the floor. That's what she needs to do. And then you make the substitution. That is how football works. Um, it's how it works in the men's game. It's how it works in the women's game. That's exactly what should occur. You're right with what you said about the concussion protocol. But like I said, that's because they've been smacked in the head. And so they're not in a situation where they are copus mentis. They can't make a decision for themselves. It's the same reason why you wouldn't let them sell their house. You know, otherwise they'd be sitting there going, oh, yeah, while you're there with your little concussion, any danger you could just sign this, but in this week's paycheck over to me. No, because they're not in the right mind to make that decision. She had not have a knock to the head. She slipped and she's hurt herself. Um, and it was a horrible slip and it is atrocious. So when you sit there and go, oh, well, we're 3-0 down, it doesn't really matter. No, it does matter because this is Manchester United. I'm not being funny. We're the kings and queens of comebacks. It's what we do. Like, you know, we absolutely have that ability. Um, it, it was very unlikely, I will grant you that. Uh, so for me... No, I, I, I think if, and it's a big if because we don't know the conversation, but if Jade has said, I wish to try and run it off and see how I'm doing. And let's not forget mentally, she's probably a bit hacked off and all because she's been in, out, in, out, shake it all about. She's not had the chance to do all the stuff she would have liked to have done. So from my point of view, if she sat there and said, I want to try and run it off, give me a minute so I can see how it goes. I think the very least we can do is, is afford her that opportunity. Um and then, you know, she's then going to choose to go and try to go into some blood and thunder challenges. I mean, that's, you know, not the most sensible thing from her point of view. But you have to have a little bit of your own responsibility. We can blame the medical staff for a lot of things. I think if she said that, it's the right thing to do for me. Yeah, it's certainly going to be a tough one in terms of, well, we hope obviously it's nothing serious. And to be honest, if there's any kind of risk, I wouldn't be playing her against Everton. It's a pointless game anyway in the Contest League and just save it for the semi-final um, at the other side of the international break. So we'll see on that one, whether obviously when the scans come back and, and, and what the results are there, fingers crossed, it is nothing too serious. And we've just been uh, having to go to the medical. I still stand by what I would say anyway, regardless of what the result is. I think it's a risk, but, but there we are. Um, right, we're... we're Someone just made in the chat. I think Charlie has uh, declined. Her. She's probably stuck on the. Is it the M4 or the M1? One of them. Whatever motorway goes up north from. It's definitely not the M4. That's that's uh, the M1, mate. M4 goes M1. all the way into Wales. If she's on that one, she's got a long trip home. Lots of I was that one. Lots of lots of for the country. Yeah, so she's probably stuck on the M1 somewhere. Um, so maybe we won't get Charlie on this one again. That's twice now. Start to think maybe it's us, but she just doesn't want to uh, come on these Monday shows when we've lost. I mean, it's um, quite possible. <laughs> there we are. Um, I, I don't really want. I mean, we could talk about the last twenty minutes. In fact, no, we will. Um, Keris, why do we start playing when the game is dead? Twenty minutes. Because <laughs> not going to lie, as I said at the start, I shouldn't say this to United fan, but this actually really wound me up that the fact that we start playing again when. All of a sudden, you know, the game's gone. We obviously get the goal back. And then we, we look the better team. You know, I had a City fan messaging me saying, like, they're worried. Like, the we, if we get the next one here, we're right back in, well, fully in this game now. But, again, I get, my personal theory is that is the players just completely ignoring the game plan and just going, right, we've got nothing to lose here. Let's just go for it. I might be wrong. I, I don't know. But what do you think it is? I mean, Sport has made the point. Maybe City were just coasting and just thought, well, you know, they don't need to push for any more anyway. Um, or do you think it's maybe something different to that? I mean, it could be your kind of theory of the players going, we've got nothing to lose. It, I've literally no... I, I think it's just... It's what I messaged you after the game. I think it's inconsistency, not only between games, but also within games. Like, we talk about the inconsistency between the performances against Brighton and against Bristol over the last two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but there's the inconsistency between games and then there's also within games as well right like I don't that and that's where it comes down to the patches where we're playing well is it because we've got a strong game plan 
or is it because we've got strong players who are sort of ignoring the game plan? And I thought I thought the subs that came on did make a difference. I mean, to give a bit of credit, Rachel Williams, she was not like her normal self by any means, but having the fresh legs up top um, definitely helped. You know, I thought that kind of front three of like, or front four, whatever it was by the end, having like Williams and Jace and Garcia combined really well up top. I thought Jace was good again the last 20 minutes. Um, I actually thought at that point it was where we could have done with it just reading the game a bit more and actually putting her in more of a central role because I think the box was so crowded with City being quite worried and having lots of, of defenders back as well. It's where we could have really done with her feet where she just turns out of the most ridiculous situations because she was doing that on the side and getting away from defenders but then she's too far from the goal and no one's getting on the end of her crosses, whereas we have other players that can cross the ball in. So I think that a sensible change would have been to move her into the middle and use her creativity in the box. But again, it's just like, to return to the actual question, I have no idea like why it is that we have this habit. I think it maybe it's out of frustration, maybe it's out of like passion would be a nicer way of putting it, but then it's like, why is that not crossing across the whole 90 minutes? I think the subs made a difference, um, but just not enough of one. And to, to be fair, I'll, I'll give credit to Mark Skinner because one of the things that usually frustrates me is him bringing a load of quality subs on with like 10 minutes to go. He gave them a full half hour to impact the game and that was the right time to make those changes. So I'll give him credit where credit's due for that. Um, but yeah. I can't believe as well. We actually saw Mallard and Jace on the same pitch. I, I couldn't believe that. I was like, Gee, is he feeding them? Or is that Mark Skinner I see down there in the <laughs> in the dugout? Because it's like we don't see that enough. And oh, lo and behold, oh, look at that. We play better when they're both on the pitch. Funny that. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I, 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 yeah I, I was happy with it. There's so much chat about biscuits now. <laughs> Got to go off the rails a little bit in the comments. Um, yeah, I, I would agree. I think Mallard was potentially... Who did she come on for? It was Alassoon, wasn't it? The... It was definitely in the 80th minute because I, I remember Jess leaving not long after. <laughs> not because Tooney had been subbed off, but <laughs> yeah, it was definitely around the towards the, the, the 80th or, or past that. Um, I can't remember what my original question was. Oh, Mary, the last 20 minutes or so in terms of why you think or what you're, you think the reason is in terms of why we looked so much better, you know, in that kind of last 20 minutes or so and, and pushing for the game. We didn't get so much better. That's that's not what happened. Um Everybody's put in the chat already. You know, they didn't need to attack us as much. Therefore, we had more of the possession, more of the ball. Um, we did have, obviously, a, a few moments. But let's be honest. Am I flagging, Jennifer? Yeah, I am flagging. Uh, I'm flagging because there's been something that's been said that I'm not going to respond to. But I'm, I'm fuming about it, if I'm honest with you. Because I think it's a ridiculous, ridiculous point uh, made by a ridiculous, ridiculous person. Um, and I hope they know they are because... It's just it's a pathetic point to make. Um, but I'm gonna leave it because that's not what we're here for. We're all about the good vibes. Um, but we weren't as good. We weren't as good. We started well, we finished all right. The, the simple fact is that City came out and played for 20 minutes, and in that 20 minutes, they absolutely battered us. Um, if it was a boxing match, it'd be the equivalent of you know, the 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 the, the opponent coming out having two or three good rounds, and then that was it. Um, the difference is if it goes to points, they wouldn't win. Um, but they knocked us down a few times. So as a result, we lost a few points. Um, it wasn't good. It wasn't good. I think, for me, the frustration about it all is that the team played well, but equally, they then didn't during that little point in the middle. And, I mean, Ella Toon sets up the goal for Anna Blundell. The irony for me is the fact that we scored a goal in the one opportunity that wasn't actually a shot. It's just a cross and then it gets turned behind Keaton, um, who absolutely did brilliantly. Um, oh, I can't find it hard, Connor. I'm going to try my best. Um, do you know, people will sit there and go, yeah, it's easy to trigger me. You think it is. And you and what cracks me up is you're probably sitting there thinking, oh, you're all triggering me because you're having a go at Katie's Ellen. I just don't agree with you. Like, honestly, that's not the drama. And absolutely this, TJ, 100% can. It's when you just come out with what I'm afraid is complete and utter tosh um, as to what you believe 
Uh, and yes, I am talking to you. I think it's absolutely ridiculous. Um, basically, your argument is so crap that you can't actually come out here and have a, a decent conversation. You've just got to try and throw it out to other stuff. But you do you, love. You do you, because you're clearly having a good old life. Um, and absolutely, TJ, tease me as much as you want. The rest of you crack on. I've got no dramas with any of you. Um, yeah, I just think for me, we, we could have done better and we should. And I think that's the bit that was um incredibly incredibly frustrating because it's hard to do mike because i'm only five foot two rising above anything is one of the hardest things i'm about as good at rising above things like that as uh as our five defenders were for the second goal um i sort of forgot where we're going just the last 20 minutes it wasn't it wasn't as spot on as it could have been connor um and i think what i really like about us as a club um is that we did play better. I mean, it's a, it's a miles better performance than Bristol City. Miles better. But City are the better side this year. And that's the bit that it sticks in your craw to say it. But they absolutely have been. So it's frustrating and it hurts, but it's kind of where we are. So, yeah. Listen, I think we've got to be at that point now. It's going to be very hard for me to... Uh, to try and end it on a positive vibe. I'm going to try and do the best that I can and try and find out I'm going to make you all giggle before we leave. But genuinely, I think that was just how I felt at the end. We scored that goal. It should have really been a goal. Keating was just better um, than Mary Earps was. And it's just really quite sad, I think. Yes, as Barry said, we are going to have to wrap this one up shortly because we've uh, we've all got stuff to do tonight, believe it or not. we are, Well, me and Barry have got another show in half an hour, but uh, Karis has got to shoot off and I've got something to do before I hop onto this other show as well. So <laughs> we're in a bit of a rush tonight and obviously no Charlie as well. However, um, what's, I've been at it. What's this? What's it? I need to look at this change up to feel like I need them to get through the work that you've got on in <laughs> um, no, I've, I don't, I, I, I don't like them. So I'm the wrong person to. Have on that. Oh, it's that moment of the show where we all sit there and go, "What the hell is going to play?" Oh, don't we need to play the match here. <laughs> what? It's Karis was shaking her head as well, so I'm guessing that wasn't a good. Uh... You don't like ginger nuts either. Oh, the pair of you. No, I'm shaking my head at Connor. Oh, what God. bizarre <laughs> thing to admit to a live audience on the internet? <laughs> Probably puts them in his burger. <laughs> Not quite. But no, no, that wouldn't work. Could you imagine him trying to cut a ginger nut with a knife and fork? They're not good for that. Not at all. <laughs> um, I was high on internet. Can I, come back and make a point? If everyone's down playing our last season, see what it's how they want then. Yeah, potentially. I made this point on a preview. I think I said this on the preview show. You know, you look at City last season compared to this season. They've almost done an opposite of us. Last season, they are doing what similar what we're doing this year. And now look at them now. They're pushing Chelsea for you know for the title and and it would likely go down to the last day. Um what were we talking about? <laughs> no idea. Um yeah anyway. Um there was a quick question from Ross and a question why didn't the home work at Everton why put I don't know. I really don't know. I don't know why we recorded to be honest. We recorded because she wasn't well I know why we recorded it's because she wasn't getting as many minutes as we expected her to but then why didn't we learn her back out again to somewhere else? She's just sitting on our bench right now not playing, not doing anything. Um, and it seems a bit of a waste. So I hope actually, speaking of Everton, I hope she plays against Everton because why not? We've got nothing else to lose in the league. Now we may as well do it. Um, <clears throat> I appreciate I'm bringing this to a swift close uh, in terms of the show. We may do another show filling in this week, dissecting this a little bit more, actually, just to, to delve into it because I feel like we've only just scratched That's the surface. <laughs> we've just scratched the surface in terms of what uh, happened in the game and, and various things. So we will do another yeah, one. That was your show just on your biscuit choices. <laughs> All that as well. Um, oh God, that's a dagger to my heart, that is. Anyway, um, player of the match. We did put it in the chat. We did come up with four names in the end. Um, it looks like there is going to be a winner, which is nice, or a clearer winner. Um, Keris, who would you have gone for in on this occasion? I, For me, it would have been between Jace and Riviere. And the reason I'm not saying Jace was because of her not tracking back, which did, did lead to a goal. Um, I thought Riviere was great. Again, she's been a standout for me this season, so I would say her, and I'm really, 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 really hoping that her injury's not anything too serious. Um, I've forgotten who the four were that I said I would have given you. Um, who did I go for? 
I went for Jays, Paris, Riviere, and Apps because I think there was a couple of saves from Mary Apps. Um, Apps was the one for me who just sort of squeaked him. Um, but then I didn't see those last two goals. I, I sort of fell off of fighting for that one. Um, nobody in the midfield was going to get it. It wasn't as, as good as it could have been. Although the first half hour was all right, that um, they lost the plot eventually. And I think a lot of that, unfortunately, for me was due to Lisa Nelson. Um, as well, she chose this game to to have a a pretty poor one as well. So as a result, the Nelson and Zellum link up didn't work up as well as it should have done. And I thought Ella Toon um, might as well have been on the Mars Skinner at Mars Skinner. Oh, that'd be a new one, wouldn't it? The Mars Skinner. That's a show to be thinking of. The Masked Singer, uh, because I didn't even know she was on the pitch. So for me, I totally agree with Keris. I think. I would have gone for Jays because she was superb going forward, but it's it's absolutely got to be um, Jade Riviere. She was f- certainly in that first half for me uh, the best player on the pitch for us. Um, so yeah, that's where I would go with. And the chat agrees as well. I've just put it on a little sheet before I forget. Jade Riviere, forty-seven percent. Um, Jason, twenty-six. Mannion, eighteen. Fair play to her. Maybe the biscuits took her over the <laughs> took her over the line on that one. Um, and uh, Paris on seven. So everyone got a vote, which I'm happy with. Um, very quickly, there's a couple of comments I just wanted to get to. NC saying that please do. We all need a therapist to baby children. I comment. If there is an appetite for another show on this, maybe we, we don't usually do two kind of review shows. Maybe we'll do another one um, Wednesday or Thursday. Obviously, we have got the Everton game to preview as well. That'll be on Friday. But if there is the appetite for another one, um, we'll potentially do another show midweek. Uh, on this one, yeah, it's what I'm keeping it spicy. I will just say because obviously the emotion of me running high has been a lot of things said. Um, it's untrue, by the way. Uh, some some of the comments I've seen um, on that one, um, but it's we've lost a, we've lost the derby again for the third time this season. There's going to be emotions and opinions and all these kinds of things. As long as you're respectful of what you say, say what you want, <laughs> say what you want. Completely disagree with every single word we say. It really doesn't matter. Um, as long as you put it in the correct way, we really do not mind on that one. That's why we want all you watching to to put your thoughts in. And there was a very quick question we just said before we end the show what do you think the outcome will be defending the semi-final we'll preview this properly close to the time because obviously it's still you know, four what is it three four weeks away uh will it be destroyed <laughs> breaks, the, <laughs> breaks united's back potentially because if we lose that is our season over so there we are um but we'll get to that closer to the time um on that one yep appreciate it not gonna lie i was dreading doing this but we've we've managed an hour. Charlie didn't turn up in the end. Charlie will hopefully be back. Maybe we'll get her on later this week. I <laughs> think that's have her on. teasing that Charlie's coming back. Because every time you say she's going to be back on next Monday, she finds something else to do. <laughs> so if you just say, that's it, Charlie's never coming on again. She's lost her chance now. She's going to have to really work hard to get back in. Also, <laughs> can I just say, for Manion should have gone to centre-back and May Letitia should have gone to right-back. But that's a story for another day. There we go. Um, and to for appreciate your effort as well. Yeah, appreciate everyone in the comments. And like I said, I'm really sorry. That obviously, there's so many comments these days that I cannot get through absolutely every single one because we would be going for hours. Um, but I do read them all, and it is helps us kind of drive the show um, on that one as well. I said, maybe we'll be back Wednesday or Thursday. Keep an eye on the socials for that one. Follow all of us uh, on Twitter. You can see us all there. All of the socials for all for United. It's all for United WFC across all of those kind of things. We'll be back later on in the week. Make sure you like the video, subscribe, all of that kind of stuff. We should see you guys in the next one. Don't you-